So with the new release of Blender 5.0, I've decided to do a product tutorial, and this is completely 100% in Blender. The only thing that's not in Blender is if you wanna go ahead and um, just use something like GIMP or Paint or Photoshop just to add a black background with some white text, and that way we can use that as a mask to project onto the product. I'll cover that in a little bit, but this is a very simple tutorial. What you're seeing here is the final result from this tutorial. I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to set up this nice lighting and materials. You can see it looks really realistic, it looks really nice. And I just went with a satirical sort of situation here, but you can make a real product with your logo or whatever on it. And this is the final render. And I'll quickly show you the blend file if you wanna see here. This is what we're making, okay? So those of you on the Patreon supporting the channel, you'll get access to this blend file. If you're not on Patreon, you can still support the channel by watching, liking, subscribing, and um, just enjoying yourself. So let's jump in and make this product render in Blender 5.0. So jumping into a new scene in Blender, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the default objects and we'll press delete. We'll go shift A and we'll go over to our mesh options and let's add in a cylinder. And we're going to our front view and with the cylinder selected, we're gonna go SZ, so SZ followed by 2.4. So SZ 2.4. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab into edit mode and we're gonna to go to our face select option and select this top face. We're gonna go ahead and press X and delete that face. Then let's go to our vertex select option, select all of these top verts. And we're gonna go shift D to duplicate, right click to let go and then S to scale it up just a little bit like this. And then we're gonna go G, Z and move it down to about here, just a little bit below this upper lip. Then we can go E to extrude S to scale and scale it in a bit till it's very close to this inside. And then go to your edge select option and make sure this inner edge is selected. Shift, Alt, left click on the outer edge so they're both active. And then go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up to about here. Then deselect and then go Shift, Alt, left click and just select only the outer loop. And then go G, Z and move it up. And we're gonna go about here, like that. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go E to extrude, S to scale. Extrude it in a little bit, about this much. E to extrude and Z to go up, like so. And then E to extrude, S to scale a little bit like this, not as much as the bottom. So you can see like that. Then E to extrude and Z to go up. And we're gonna go about here and then press F just to fill that. So what we have is this shape like this. The thing is, if you wanted to, you could enable X-ray, enable vertex select, and at any point, you could come up here and make any sort of visual modification you want with the height and style. But this is quite simply what we're trying to do here. Very easy. We're then gonna go down here, select just these bottom verts by themselves, and we're gonna go Control B just to create a bevel. And if the bevel isn't looking right, like it is in this case, what you can do is just not do that. Quickly tab back out with the selected, just go Control A and apply the scale, then tab back into edit mode. And now if you go Control B or Command B, you'll get a straight um, proper looking bevel. And we're just gonna give a slight bevel like this and then roll the middle mouse button just to add in two or three segments like that. We don't want it to be too big. And then we're gonna to go to a face select option, just select this bottom face. I'll turn off the X-ray at this point. And we're just gonna go I to inset it about this much and then E to extrude up a little bit and click S to scale. Then go to your edge select option, holding in shift and alt, loops like this edge as well. Then go control B and just create a slight bevel like that. There we go. And then what we wanna do, we wanna come in here and select only this inside edge, so shift alt left click to loop select this inside edge, as you can see, and then shift alt left click this outer edge. And then this one here as well, so shift alt, just holding that in, and we're just gonna go all the way around, grabbing all of these guys over here like so, all these edges, and then we're gonna go control B or command B, and just create a slight bevel, so control B, slight bevel, and just roll the middle mouse button to add in one or two segments like this. Very simple. Then you're gonna come in here, control R, left click once, you slide down a loop. Control R again, left click once, slide up. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Control R, left click, slide one up. Control R, left click, slide one down. And that's about it. We might just select this top face. Let's just go I just to insert it a little bit like so. And that's about it. 
Okay, that's looking really good for now. So another thing we'll quickly do is we'll just come in here, Control R, we'll just roll our middle mouse button just to add in two loops here in the middle. Let's get a face select option. And what we want to do is we want to kind of just drag and select some middle faces here like this. So let's get about six faces. We're going to go I to inset, click, Shift, Alt, S and round them out. Click and let's just go X and delete those faces. Then go to your edge select, Shift, Alt, left click to select these edges. Then E to extrude and Y, click and then S, Y and zero to flatten it. And then in our top view, maybe let's just bring it out. So G, Y, bring it out a bit. Click, S to scale. And then let's go E to extrude, S to scale, and then E to extrude in along the Y, like that. And maybe just go F just to fill that space. And let's go Shift, Alt, and just left click, just select these edges here. Go Control B just to give them a slight bevel. And then Control R, left click here just to slide this in over here and click. And then what we have here is just sort of like this thing coming out like this. All right now, this is an optional thing if you want to do that, but that's what I'm going to add in like that. And then I'm going to tab back out and right click and go Shade Smooth. And let's go to our modifiers, add modifier, search, give this a sub, and let's give it a subdivision surface. And we'll leave it as two on the render and one in the viewport display. So there we have it. Okay, it's looking really, really good. So, what we can do now is we can start working on the actual materials and the lighting. So, let's start by actually creating like a scene with some lighting. That way when we do our materials, it'll be less frustrating because we can actually see our materials lit up nicely in the way we want to see them. So what I'll do, I'll go G, Z and just move this guy up till it's sitting on top of the floor here. I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna go to my mesh options, add in a plane. And I'm gonna just go S and scale this plane up nice and big like this and then S, X, scale it along the X. And then I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna select this back edge. So if I were to go in the front view, what we're looking for is that very back edge behind this bottle. And I'm gonna go E to extrude and Z and just kind of move it up like this, make it nice and high. Then I'm gonna click on this edge and go Control B, just create a bevel and roll the middle mouse button a few times, click. And I might just even select the whole thing and just move it back just a little bit like that. Okay, so there we have that. And tab back out, I'm gonna right click and go Shade Smooth. And then in the front view, I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna add in a camera. And I'll just move the camera back. I'm gonna go G, Y and move it back. And then G, Z and move it up slightly. And we're gonna press zero to go into a camera view. And with our camera selected, make sure it's active up here in the outliner. Go to your camera settings. Let's give it a, string, uh, a focal length of 120. Let's go over to our output and let's give it a resolution of 1080 by 1080. And I'm just going to go ahead and just move my camera back just a little bit in the scene. So we have something that looks like this, okay? Then we're gonna to go to our render engine. We're gonna change it from EV to cycles. If you have a GPU, I definitely recommend you give it a shot. And if you don't, you can just stick to CPU. And then under your render max samples, we're gonna set this to a value of 45, which should be fine with the denoising. Now let's go Shift A, let's go to our light options, add in an area light. We're gonna go G, Z and move that area light up above our product bottle here. We're gonna go over to our light properties and with it selected, let's give it a size of six meters and let's go and give it a strength of 850 on the power. Now the size of this, the power is dependent on the scale of your scene. So if you have a smaller scene, you'd need less power or you wanna put your light further away. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our left orthographic view and we're just gonna go G, sorry, I meant to say right, we're going to our right orthographic view. We're gonna just move it back so it's coming from behind here like that, okay? And then what we wanna do is we wanna to go to our top view, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and have one coming from the front, off to the side a little bit like so. Maybe just a little bit further back. Yeah, that'll do nicely. And then maybe just one more coming from the side here at the back but this one will kind of have it kind of pointing up a little bit like that. Okay, so that's kind of our lighting for now. And then we're gonna go into our camera view. We'll go Control B and just drag over the camera. That'll limit the rendering to the camera view. 
Then we can go Z and then click on rendered. And you can see this is what we have. Now that's looking okay, but it's a little bit weak. So that's where we're gonna come over here. We're gonna to go to our world properties. We're gonna to go to our color here and we'll change it to the sky texture, which is now much better inside of um, Blender 5. And a few settings we wanna alter here. We wanna come here and make the strength 0 0.5. Sorry, I meant to say 0 0.05, so 0 0.05, there we go. And it doesn't look like much, but if you come over here to the sun rotation, let's type in 240 degrees. So it kind of comes off from the side. And now that is looking really lovely. So that is all built into Blender and it works just fine. So now let's do a few materials. We're gonna click on our bottle. We'll go to our materials tab. We're in the rendered view currently. Let's click here to add a new material. And the first material, let's just call it plastic, orange, orange, there we go. So plastic orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it a base color that's nice and orangey. And for now, I'm gonna bring down that roughness. There we go. Then I'm gonna create another material, I'm gonna go new, and I'm gonna call it plastic see through. There we go. And I'm gonna come over here and give it a slightly off white color. Then I'm gonna come here to the transmission and I'm gonna give it just a weight of almost one. So just up to like 0.9 around about there. And then I'm gonna drag this roughness down, but not all the way, maybe to about 1.5, 0.15 for now. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode and let's just select any face on this bottom part and go control L. That'll select the whole thing by itself and then click on that plastic see through and then assign it as you can see here like that. Then let's tab back out. And we also wanna make sure that the IOR is actually set to 1.2. The roughness will actually just make 0.2. And what we'll do, we'll just come here to the base color and let's just make that actually a bit more orangey but not quite too saturated. So maybe just something like that. So really don't go too saturated, otherwise it's not gonna look very good. And one more thing we can do to really make it look nice is just go over to the coat and then give it a weight of 0.4. And now this is gonna look really realistic when we render it. I'm just gonna grab the stage here that this is sitting on and I'm just gonna go GZ and bring it down a bit. So it's kind of floating in the air like that. I just think that looks a bit better. Okay, maybe just a little bit higher. Just so we can kind of see that shadow just kind of barely cast on the ground. And that's looking really good. Now, there's one crucial bit that I haven't added in here, but it's really simple to do. We're gonna select our bottle, we're gonna tab into edit mode, and let's just select only a face here. Go Control L, Control I to inverse the selection, and then press H to hide the mesh. Go to your vertex select option, Shift Alt, left click to select this top loop of edges. Shift D to duplicate, click and then S to scale it down. And we're gonna go about this big. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and Z and we're gonna extrude it down and click. At this point, I'll enable my X-ray. And then in the front view, I'm just gonna bring it down to about here. I'll press F to fill those faces. And then I'm gonna go Control B or Command B just to bevel it. And I'll bevel it about that much and I'll click. Then I'll go Control L just to make the whole thing active. Then we'll go here and click plus, assign, and let's create a new material. And with this one, we'll just kind of make it sort of like an orangey sort of red color. And we'll bring that roughness way down. Let's tab back out. And now let's go into our rendered view. And you can see that's what we have. I might just make it a little bit more saturated. And there we have it. One more thing we'll do with the materials before we add the text is we'll just grab this top bit. We'll go Alt H in edit mode. This is optional, but I like to just select this inner band here. Go Control plus just to grow it a little bit. And that inner band, we're just gonna go ahead and create a new material. And let's assign it and call it new. And let's just call it metal. And let's just make it metallic and bring the roughness down a bit and make the value a little bit darker. Okay, and that's now that metal band running around there. And we can call the second, um, the other material we made previously, the inside bit, let's just call it liquid. And we'll just leave it at that. So that is all of the different base materials that we've made here. So let's, before we add the text, let's just go ahead and make sure to quickly save this and then go render and then render the image. And there you have it. You can see this is starting to look really nice, very realistic and just really nice uh, looking shaders and lighting. So what we can really do to make this look like a product is add some text. Now you can use any program you want. You could even use paint 
Microsoft Paint if you had to, but I recommend you use something free like GIMP, or if you already have an Adobe Suite, maybe use Photoshop, but it's all sorts of really cool tools out there. Most of them are free, but I'm gonna be using GIMP in this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into GIMP, and here you can see what I did is I created this image here. Now this image is 900 pixels by 1920 pixels, okay? So that's the dimensions and the pixel size. And then I just got some white text that I put on it. And I just typed in blender juice. And then it's added sort of this fake satirical label here telling you about the product. And then at the bottom here, I just put some text that said always fresh. Now, if you wanted to, like I said, you can go into Microsoft Paint. You can go ahead and um, just adjust sort of like the dimensions. And then you could always go ahead and you can paint it black. Then you can get the text and add in some white text, right? and then control the size and all that. So I'm saying there's all sorts of different ways you could do this if you don't have Photoshop. So here I can make that text, I can make it bold, right? You kind of get the idea here. And you can change the different fonts. But I just wanted to kind of get where I'm coming from with this. So you could easily make this and then make sure you just export this as a PNG or a JPEG. And then what you can do in Blender, and this is really simple to do, you can see this is mine that I've exported. This is this simple black and white image with those dimensions that I mentioned. You can simply then go back into Blender and grab that um, plastic see-through material. Let's go over to our shading workspace. Let's go over here and go Shift A, Search, and just get another principled. Right, let's put the principled over here. Let's go Shift A, Search, and get a mix. And let's get a mix shader, place it over here, and then place this input into the bottom. So one of these is gonna be our see-through material and the other one's gonna be just white, just basic principle going in here. So we're gonna mix that with that image. So we're gonna drag on this factor, we're gonna type an image and get an image color. Let's open that and then I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I know where I've placed that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And now if I go over here and I go Z and go rendered, I can see it's something here, but it's just using the default projection that came with the UV sphere. So I'm gonna go into my UV editing workspace. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select just these very front faces here like that, right? And in the front view, I'm gonna go U and I'm just gonna go cylindrical project like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead over here to the drop down and get that image so I can see it as reference. And then over here, I'll just move this and I'll just kind of scale it to match. And then over here I can see, I can go Z and I can go rendered and I can see how that lines up. So I can kind of scale it and move it till I have it lining up over here. And you can see over here it's a little bit stretched. So what I might do, I might just go U and, and do it angle based like this and then try that method out. So you can try out some of the different methods but I think this one here works a bit better. So now it's not stretching around the edges, okay? And with that done, what I can do is I can go Control I to get the rest of it. And then I'm just gonna go U, unwrap, and I'm just gonna take all of this that I've just done. I'm just gonna scale it way down and just put it somewhere over here where it's not over some text. Tab back out, and now that should just be fine. So what we're gonna have now is this text being displayed like this. If you wanted to, you could come over to your shading workspace, and you could come here and change the color of the text, or you could, you know, make a whole different material or altogether. It doesn't even necessarily have to be um, like a see-through bottle. This is just something that I've decided to do. So we can kind of see that sort of inside liquid tube inside of there. But this has been the tutorial. So what we're gonna do, we'll go into our layout. We'll make sure to save. And I'm just gonna go ahead, Shift D to duplicate this guy. Bring it over to the side. I'm gonna rotate it forward. So we can kind of see it a little bit different. Then I'm going to go Shift D to duplicate, bring it over here. And this guy I'll rotate sort of like the other way, like that. There we go. And this is just so we can kind of get some different perspectives on this product render. There we go. And I'm going to make sure to save and let's go render and just render the image. And there we have the final rendered result. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this Blender tutorial. I really hope it's been simple enough. I will be uploading this to my Patreon so you guys can get access to this blend file. Um, but other than that, thank you for watching. Definitely subscribe, like, check out some of my other content, and I'll see you guys next time.